John Cullen with OKRaw.com to with another exciting episode for you and where I'm at today I'm here in South Florida in Homestead Florida which is south of Miami on the way to the Florida Keys that actually I've never been to because I don't know if there's a lot of fruit down there and the reason why you clicked on this episode is because you want to learn where you guys can eat all you can eat mangoes for eight bucks and that's what I'm gonna share with you guys today but before I do I want to tell you guys why I came to South Florida this trip I came to South Florida this trip for the 24th annual mango festival that took place at Fairchild Botanical Garden. That was just two days ago. And I'll tell you guys, that it was pretty much a waste of money. It cost $25 to get in if you're not a member of a botanical uh, garden somewhere, like I am. And then once you're in, they have like a whole bunch of booths, like farmer's market style booths that, you know, have some samples of things using mango inside there. And then they have a tasting room that you go in for just two more dollars you get to sample 10 different kinds of mangoes, and that's pretty cool, but the, the, what they don't tell you is that the sample size are like little toothpick dabs, like no bigger, bigger than a chiclet piece of gum. Like, that's a tease to me, like, I love mangoes. Eating a chi chiclet sized piece of mango, that's a tease. You get 10 different kinds. You get to vote for your favorite ones. They have a lot of cool mango talks and all this kind of stuff. But man, if you really want to eat mangoes, the Mango Festival is not for you. That's what I learned this time. So I thought I'd come to a place that I know I could eat some mangoes at, and this is the Preston Bee Bird Mary Heinlein Fruit and Spice Park at 24801 Southwest 187th Avenue here in Homestead, Florida. And uh, this is a public park, actually, that has uh, fruit and spice trees, and actually they're mostly fruit trees. And uh, this is a public park, and the thing is, at this park, you can eat anything that lands on the ground. So if a fruit's ripe, it drops on the ground, it's fair game, you guys can eat it. Now you can't pick things off the tree and you can't take things out of the park. Otherwise, everybody that came to the park would not be able to enjoy the fruit. Plus, most people, especially a lot of you guys watching this, would pick things too early. And you know, fruit's always best at its peak ripeness, so let the tree ripen stuff up. There's plenty of stuff on the ground, depending on what time of year you come. When I came like in the winter time, not a whole lot, but in the summer, we're here in mid-July. Man, the ground is loaded with all kinds of stuff. So like, I didn't even eat breakfast. I just came here first and I'm gonna eat my breakfast and probably lunch here. And I'm gonna walk away from this place stuffed for just eight bucks. So let me go ahead and head inside and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do it, eating some mangoes. So now I'm here at the entrance of the Fruit and Spice Park. They're open every day from uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And here's my tip. You guys wanna come on a weekday. Don't come on the weekends. The weekends are the crowdedest times. Probably the, some of the best days to come are like probably Monday, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they probably start picking up. But yeah, I'm here on Monday and I came here early in the morning. So yeah, I get here early so you guys have the best pick of the litter or the best pick of the drop fruits. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, head inside the entrance, pay my eight bucks. We'll meet you on the other side. All right, so I just got out of the office there and in the office, uh, you know, basically you're gonna pay your eight bucks. They take credit cards, so that's really cool. So you can save your cash for the farmer's market. And then actually they have a whole bunch of samples, like different kinds of samples of all the fruit in season that some of the people at the park picked and prepared for you. So that's one way you guys could get some samples, but they're small samples, but the better samples are out in the field. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we can find today. So if you guys have never come to the Fruit and Spice Park before, I would definitely recommend and encourage you guys to go on the little tour that they provide. I think it's at currently at 11 a.m., 1.30, and maybe some other times. Oh, three o'clock. <laughs> And uh, they give the tour in this area right here. Sometimes I'll take the big tram out if there's like a lot of people on the weekend. Sometimes I'll take a little mini golf cart that was like six to eight people um, on the weekdays when it's quieter. And if you don't do that, then at least minimally get a walking map so you guys could uh, walk around and uh, you know see different parts of the park. This walking map kind of tells some of the different areas where some of the different trees are, but just uh, you know because it's on this map doesn't mean they have other areas with the same trees and other areas. So if you go on the tour, you're gonna to learn a lot of cool things about fruits that you probably never knew. I, every time I go on the tour, I learn at least one new thing, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, so anyways, we're gonna go ahead, because we already went on the tour today, we're gonna to go ahead and uh, head over to the reason why I'm here, the mangoes. So on your way to the mangoes, you may pass by lots of different fruit trees, many of which are actually not yet ripe. So it's kind of like a tease. <laughs> it's like a girl that teases you. It's fruits, it's not ripe. But yeah, we passed uh, some long on, Kohala long on, not ripe yet, and these jackfruits, not yet ripe. This guy is huge, and this, there's like tons of jackfruit up on this tree here. But we're not here to talk about the jackfruit today. We're here to talk about the mangoes, because I'm so hungry. 
so now I finally made it to the mango orchard here and here's the sign kind of introduces the mango and how it was brought to Florida by uh, Captain Hayden or something like that uh, but anyways behind me as you guys can see there's a uh, mango trees and if we like look that way to the right and then also to the left they go all the way down and they go down and down and down so far down that you could be walking for miles <laughs> well, at least maybe a mile but uh, there's over 180 different kinds of mango trees here. And uh, here's just some. Now, what I don't want you to do is come here, John, there's all the mangoes, just pick a mango and just trying to start eating it, right? If you do that, you're gonna end up with a mouthful of nastiness. You're gonna waste your time. These guys are not ripe. You wanna go the ones on the ground because the tree gives up the fruit when it's ripe. And that's when I like eating it. So uh, let's go ahead and go hunting for some mangoes and show you guys what kind of varieties I'm going to be eating today. So as you guys can see, there's plenty of mangoes up in the tree, but what we're looking, we're looking down at the ground so you guys can see like the littering of mangoes at the bottom. You can see ones that have been eaten and ones that are full. And uh, here's two nice ones here. So when you come upon a mango, you know, hopefully it's going to be pretty good color. Sometimes the tree drops it pretty, you know, prematurely. Sometimes they're pretty good. Let's see, there's two here. I'm going to select the one that's a little bit soft and I'm going to, of course, brush it off. And we're going to go ahead and bite into it just like an apple. Actually, I do not recommend that. <laughs> Some people are very uh, allergic to mangoes, the skin, the sap that comes out. So uh, I recommend you guys bring a knife. I should have told you guys that earlier. But uh, since I'm flying by plane, I don't have check bags, so I can't bring knives on the plane. I do not recommend that. You'll get uh, probably arrested by TSA. I got some points against my record for doing that. But uh, we stopped at the local Dollar Tree here in Homestead, and for just a dollar seven, including tax, we got this one. This is the Cousteau Utility Knife by Royal Norfolk Cutlery. And let me tell you, this is the best knife you're gonna buy for a dollar before you come to the Fruit and Spice Park, so you'll be able to eat the fruit. So we got the one mango here. We're just gonna go ahead and cut it open and see what it looks like. Oh, so this variety is known as the uh, Fairchild variety. Look at that, first sweet and juicy mango of the day. This part to me looks a little bit, uh, I don't know, fermented or something like that. So like, you know what, all you can eat mangoes here, I don't really care, I'm just cutting it off. Some people might be saying, John, you're wasting that. Well, all right, well, you all could eat that if you want, I ain't eating that. There's so many other good ones. And then look at that, we could just peel back the flesh right here. Mmm. Wow, actually, this is a good mango. Bear child mango, I'll give it a thumbs up. One mango down, over a hundred to go. And this is, a, this is this, uh, all the mangoes all the way down. You can see it just goes on and on and on. Now, unfortunately, you know, as you're walking, you want to have like eagle eye vision, like scanning the trees underneath the trees. Like, all right, where's the ripest mangoes? You guys can see there's some mangoes there, but some of them look eaten. There's bugs on them and stuff. And, uh, you know, so I would encourage you guys to like, Make sure you kind of look in the leaves and like really pay attention. Sometimes I go zigzag, so I'll go across to this one, scope out this area, then I'll zigzag to this side and look. Or if you come here with a friend, each one of y'all take one side and kind of look and ha have the other person call the other one when you see like ripe mangoes. I'm probably not going to get to eat like all 180 varieties because the trees produce at different times of the year. Sometimes they come in as early as June. We're here in July, so it's a good solid time to come and they'll produce some of them or produce in through uh, August. But July is peak season. So yeah, not every tree is producing, but when you come, they'll always gonna be something. And uh, you know, it's like an Easter egg hunt, but you're on a, a mango fruit hunt. Oh, let's see, I see a couple over here. Let's see what we could find. All right, so here's another mango tree right here. This one's known as the Mango Julie. So I like that they have all the trees marked. So on a little sign, you can see the variety. And you know, if you guys like have eaten a lot of mangoes like out the store, trust me, you guys have not had some of the varieties here. This is kind of the store. They got like Hayden, Tommy Atkins, maybe Keat, maybe a few other ones these days, but you're not gonna get the variety or the flavors or taste sensations that you'll be able to get here in South Florida in mango season. So you know, either you guys could get fruit sent to you and uh, you know, just get what's uh, through the standard conventional and organic produce channel at your local store, or you could have like people like uh, rain with miamifruit.org send you some of these mangoes or like me you could actually travel and come to south florida 
to pick the mangoes yourself because you guys could do it better than anybody else. Anyways, let's go ahead and see if they have any Julie's ripe on the ground. Oh wait, here's one right here. All right, so this Julie, look at that. Like, if you saw this in the store, I know a lot of you guys would never buy this mango. Look at that, it's an ugly ass mango. Julie, you are an ugly mango. <laughs> but look at that, it's like, it's kind of like, um, it's not totally uniform. It comes to a little point here and it's fat and it's got all this like black blemish stuff on there. It doesn't look too pretty. But let's see if we could find a ripe one to find out how it tastes. Let's see if I could hunt around on the ground here. All right, this is what you don't want to do. Some poor sap, <laughs> hopefully got sap on them, uh, picked the mango off the tree because they wanted this so bad. But the problem is it's rock hard. Rock hard, man, look at that. Wow, you hear that? It's like a rock. It's hard, like the person that picked this is an idiot. Hopefully none of you guys were here and this is the mango you picked. But if you are, you're an idiot. <laughs> Don't pick the mangoes off the trees, man. Look at this, I mean, I'll cut into this only because it's on the ground, but man, I can barely cut through this. Ugh. This is like green mango style, man, like if you're making shredded mango. This is not gonna be sweet. Doesn't even smell sweet, it's too hard. Not gonna be ripe. Don't do it. Don't waste the mangoes up the tree. Let it, let them be ripe, let them drop. So somebody like me could get them ripe, right? All right, so let's show you guys a ripe one. Oh, here's one, look at this. Now this by no means is gonna win a beauty contest, but I hope it wins a flavor contest. This thing is kind of ugly. It's like black and all funky. Like a lot of you ladies might not even eat this because it looks all weird. I don't care, you know, like, how good a mango tastes is not dependent on how it looks good on the outside. And people are like that too, right? There's really nice people that maybe not so good looking on the outside, but that's all right. Let's see how this mango looks on the inside. All right, look at that. Look at that difference. Do you guys see the color difference of the one I just like cut? That was like unripe that somebody threw down. Unripe? Ripe. This is what they should look like when they're a full tree drop. And okay, you guys can't do this, sorry. You can smell it. Oh my god, it smells like the, like, <laughs> like a really good women's natural organic, like essential oil, floral perfume. You guys get that? That, this just smells amazing, like, better than any other mango I've smelled before. It's like, oh, you know what it smells like to me? It smells like hot buttered popcorn. I don't know why. All right, now we're going to go ahead and try this for you guys. Oh my God, this is probably the favorite mango that I've had here today. I think it's only my, you know, I've only had a couple so far, but this is amazing. I wish they sold these in the stores. Julie Mango, she's my new girl. Friend in a fruit. So now I'm geeking out, no wait, I'm fruiting out here at the Fruit and Spice Park and the next one we're gonna try is the Mango Tong Dam. And I know you, most of you guys have never tried that before. And looking on the ground, looks like a lot of them are getting eaten at this point by fruit flies, some have been eaten. But let's see if we can find any ripe ones. All right, look, man, there's a whole bunch of ripe ones down here waiting for me. Now I got the pick of the litter, or the pick of the mangoes here. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up each one. And just because it's green, doesn't mean that it's unripe. If it's dropped, it's a little bit soft, it's gonna be ripe. And if, if you open it up and it doesn't look good or doesn't taste good to you, throw it down and get the next one. <laughs> Unlimited mangoes here. So yeah, this one, uh, it's a little bit firm still. This one's got some nice uh, yellowing at the top. Uh, a little bit soft at the top, but you know what? There's a bunch more. Okay, this one. This one's really soft on this side, so maybe when it dropped, it hit the ground. This side's a little bit firm, but still uh, you know, soft. And this one, ooh, that's pretty soft. All right, so let's see here. Let's try this one. I like the color on this, and we're gonna try the side that's uh, maybe a little bit softer than the, the side that's like mush. I'm gonna go ahead and take the knife and cut this baby open. All right, look at that. Really nice color on there. Despite the green, we're gonna go ahead and smell it. Now, I always encourage you guys, no matter what food you're eating, to smell the food before you eat it. This kind of like, once I smelled this, it like smells good and I start salivating. Like, I didn't have to think about salivating. Now, if you guys like, maybe like smell some like dead cow or turkey, I don't think, if you guys smell it, it's gonna smell putrid. I don't think you guys are gonna start salivating. But with mangoes, this will happen naturally. Wow, so this smells amazing. We're gonna go ahead and cut this up. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and try it for you guys. See what it tastes like. I don't know, what is this? Tang, down, dang, I don't know, whatever. All right, nice mango I've never had before in my life. Mmm, 
That's a good solid mango. Not gonna win any awards in my book, but I'm gonna sit here and eat it all. So sometimes you gotta really get in there to see if you could find any mangoes. So this tree, they haven't like really pruned too much or something for some reason. We're gonna come in here and like spread these leaves apart. Look at that. See that little ripe mango waiting for me? This must have dropped between yesterday and today because otherwise it would have been gone. Ugh. Oh my God, look at this. This one, the sign is kind of hard to see. It's a uh, mango indica and it's a uh, caro sagaway or something like that. But look at the color on that, man. This is like super ripe, nice yellow, vibrant color. I really love fruits that just look really good. I mean, this is a good looking fruit right there. Hopefully it tastes as good as it looks. It's a tad bit soft, so that's pretty good. Now, so for those of you guys that are northerners that don't live in the tropics and don't pick fresh mangoes, you know, if you guys bought mangoes in the store before, the mangoes you buy in the store, you gotta pick those guys a little bit softer than you would the ones here. The ones in the store, if they've been imported, you know, from out of the country, not grown in Florida or California, which has a thriving mango industry, uh, small yet thriving. <laughs> Um, those have been hot water dips. So when they hot water dip them, that's to kill some bugs and pests so that the, you know, they don't import pests with the mangoes. But what that does, that shrivels up the skin and also they got to pick the mangoes a little bit earlier than they should. So you're never going to get really good full flavor on an imported mango, in my opinion. But so these guys, if they're as smushy as the ones that you would buy in the store, then sometimes it may be fermented and actually overripe. So these should just, you know, give to general pressure, maybe like an avocado. So let's go ahead. Oh, there's some bugs on these. These guys are organic here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and <laughs> blow off the bugs because I don't want to eat no bugs. <laughs> Get off, bug. All right. I'm going to go ahead and slice this baby open and show you guys what we got on the inside. Oh, man, another bug. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, look at that. This is a nice yellow mango on the inside. Not a deep color. Smelling it, nah, not super floral. I have other, other floral ones. Let's go ahead and cut off some bad spots here. Cut it in half, and let's see what this tip mango tastes like. You know what? This is like the best deal in fruit that I found anywhere. Like, provided that you come on a day where there's, it's like mango season, because sometimes you come to Fruit and Spice Park, there's like, there's slim pickings. You know, as much as I love wholesale produce terminals to buy fruit in bulk for hella cheap, like this is way better because like the fruit is literally unlimited. As long as you could hunt, peck, and find it, you could eat it. <laughs> yeah, and come here, uh, you know, don't eat breakfast when you come. Mmm. The other thing I'm going to tell you, you're going to get some of the best tasting mangoes they've ever tasted. This one, scale of 1 to 10, above average, I'd rate a 6.5 this year. Now every year the, you come, the mangoes are going to taste different because the taste of the mangoes are influenced by the weather, you know, among other things. You know, the seasons, if it's rained, if it's not rained, if it's hot, you know, if it's too many cold days, too many warm days, how much they're watering, what the fertilizer is. So every, every year the same mango can even taste a little bit different. So yeah, come back multiple years in the summertime to the fruit and spice park to eat mangoes until your heart's content. All right. I'm not full of mangoes yet, so don't worry. I'm gonna keep up this tour until I get full or until my camera runs out of batteries. <laughs> so we got another mango sitting under the mango tree here. And this actually just has a, it's an indica variety mango, variety unknown. So we'll see, it's small. And there's a lot of them underneath the tree that are kind of eaten. And uh, you know, one of my favorite things is to eat mangoes like warm by the warm summer sun. These mangoes have been sitting in the sun here in Florida and they're like warm by the sun, like naturally. They're not like in a fridge and like you're eating them cold, you're eating them like warm. So they even kind of like taste even better warm by the sun. Oh wow, this one tastes good. This is an unknown variety. Mmm, smells good. Mmm, this one tastes good to me. Kind of stringy. But this one has a really good flavor for me. I think I'll finish this one and see how many more I could eat today. All right, found another mango. This is, I think, called a Caria Columbia or something like that. Ah, it's kind of soft. Got some bug holes on there. We'll probably just cut it out and see what it looks like and then cut the bad spots out. Oh, look at that. Looks really nice. Got some rot here at the bottom. 
Go ahead and cut that out. Cut it in half. Let's see, smell it. Wow, this one smells really good. All right, I just wanted to show you guys this. Look at this. These are some other fruit pigs. This ain't me. Like, I would have ate more of this fruit, man. They, like, left good halves of fruit there you could be eating. But now they're just uh, fly food. <laughs> yeah, it looks like somebody got a couple unripe ones. But, yeah, man, this is, like, just mangoes galore here. So you guys got to come out. Book your flight. Like, oh, we fly, we fly Frontier Airlines. Travel with a backpack only. You can fly for the cheapest price down to Miami. So one of the last mangoes that I'll be trying today is the mango suatong variety. Looks like this. Looks like a different kind of mango than what I'm used to. And I like the different mangoes. And one of the reasons why I like coming here is because there's just so many trees and it's just like, this is what we do naturally. We'd be foraging for our fruit or foraging for our food. We wouldn't be going to the store and buying fruit, man. You just have trees out in nature like this. You'd be able to roam around and find the right fruit, eat it, and move on. And leave the pits, the peels, and the seeds so that they can grow more mango trees. So we're going to go ahead and cut into this guy. This guy's not super soft, but let's see what we got on the inside. You know, it could be a better, uh, deeper color, I think. Smells all right. Let's go ahead and cut this baby in half and uh, see what it tastes like. Mmm. This one's a little bit fermented. A little bit overripe. I mean, it's all right. I mean, there's so many mangoes here, you can't go wrong. All right, so now the next mango here is a mango cobelia. Making our way through the orchard. Gonna go ahead and cut this open here. Nice little small mango. Let's see what we got on the inside. Pretty nice color. Love it. Some of it looks a little bit translucent. Smells good. My stomach is getting a full of mangoes finally. Yeah, it's important not to overeat when you come here. Wow. This one, I can say I really do like the flavor a lot. So the last mango of the day, since my batteries are running out, we got this guy. This is the uh, Sia Siam. I mean, I could go all day. I mean, I haven't even covered a, even maybe half of the mangoes that I could be eating because my batteries are running out and I'm getting a little bit full. But if you guys come here, come here on an empty stomach. Oh, also, other thing, um, there's lots of mosquitoes and bugs. You're going to get bit. So I would encourage you guys to wear like long sleeve shirts and long sleeve pants. At least I'm wearing long sleeve pants today. Uh, this is a lighter color mango on the inside. Once again, smell it before we eat it. Mmm, this has one of those nice floral scents that I like a lot. Mmm. This is definitely a good solid mango to end this video on. I guess what I'd like to say is this. You guys want to come out to the fruit and spice park, especially during mango season, June, July, August, any day during any of those months for eight bucks. Make sure you bring a knife, wear long sleeve clothes. Oh, don't forget, bring dental floss because you're going to have some mango strings stuck in your teeth. And then uh, make sure you brush your teeth after the mangoes, all the, all the sugar on there. But wait about three hours after you're done eating before you uh, brush, but floss immediately after. I've definitely had a fun time here at the Fruit and Spice Park. If you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know. I'll be sure to come back and do more episodes at the Fruit and Spice Park. Every time I come here, I just love it. It's like a kid in a candy store, but I'm an adult in a fruit tree orchard. And that's what we really should be going for, not these candy stores. Bring your kids here too. Get them to sample out the mangoes. Find out the ones they like. And even better yet, have them hunt and find the right mangoes for you guys so you guys can work less. Hey, one of these days I'll have kids. But I still like picking my own fruit, man. I do it the best. Uh, also be sure to check, check that subscribe button or click that subscribe button right down below to be notified new and upcoming episodes I have coming out about every five to seven days. And also be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. I have over 450 videos on this channel now. Teach you guys how to eat more fruits and vegetables because they are simply the best foods on the entire planet. So uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best. This is John Cole with OKRod.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. What we're going to do today for you guys is actually do another compilation video. These guys, these videos are one of my uh, favorite style of videos to do. It's where I interview uh, other long-term raw 